Hello, my name is Wesley Aston, and thank you for watching my series on how I shoot and edit my time lapses. For this portion, we're going to go over a program I use very first after shooting a time lapse called LR Time Lapse. Definitely a great program. It's got a lot of options that it can do for you. And first off, I would just start with going to their website, www.lrtimelapse. Learn a little bit about how the program works and what it can do for you. Uh, make sure you buy it because you get the best features when you buy the program. And they've got a lot of great tutorials and some forums if you run into some questions and whatnot. It's definitely worth the money for what this is. So check it out. Also, the other things you will need to run this program is Adobe Lightroom. So make sure you have that also. So let's start off, first of all, going to LR Time Lapse, And there's something after you've downloaded and organized all your files so that you're ready to go. Um, I make sure that the only thing I have in my folder is specific for this time lapse. I don't want any extra files in that same folder because it could just cause some issues. So you'll just want to get into where your folder's at, to where your time lapse is. And as I see here, I've labeled it time lapse number one. It's got 490 files in it. It uh, shows me it's going to be 16 seconds long, and that's given off 30 frames a second. So I'll just click that guy, and LR time lapse will load it up and kind of give a reading of all the files. It takes a little bit of time, so just kind of hang on as it does its thing. Once it's loaded up, you can kind of see a preview. And even you can kind of scroll through, just scrub through what it's going to look like. It's a little choppy at first until it's read all of its files. So as you see over here, all these things start popping up. Well, it's getting a reading on all this. And then over here, you see this little line. It's trucking along. It's just kind of reading everything, and it's getting kind of a light meter off of everything. So you see right here, it would kind of be like your even exposure. Well, it's a little bit lower down here, so I know that I could, I could brighten this up a bit. So let's let this guy load up here, and as it's doing that, I'm going to kind of go over some of the basic tabs over here. Very simple workflow. I mean, it's kind of like step one, step two, step three, step four, and there's a few things you have to do with each one of these. Um, as you go into your other workflows, like there's the basic workflow, the long-term workflow, those aren't anything I use that often, but maybe you would on your project, and that's where checking out the software could help you find the right thing for you. So first off, we're going to start with Keyframe Wizard. Once it loads up, and what the Keyframe Wizard does is let me pick how many files I want to edit. So in this file, as I see here, you know, my light's going to be pretty even for the day. I don't have to create too many keyframes to edit, so I don't have to edit every single file. I'm only going to do the keyframes, and then LR Time Lapse will make all the adjustments in between with all the other files from the two keyframes or five keyframes or however many you pick. That's the first thing we're going to start with is just doing keyframes. We're going to then just save that, and then we're going to drag this into Lightroom. So I just make sure I have Lightroom ready, I've got it open and I'm in my library just waiting for LR time lapse to finish loading. Okay, now it's all loaded up and you can tell by this blue line has made it all the way to the side. So I can come over here and hit play, kind of get a real time view of what my time lapse looks like without any editing. Um, some can be very, have a lot of flicker in it I should say and it really depends on your lens and your camera and the scene and there's a lot of factors that go into it. This one I don't have very much flickering, but some of my other lenses, the aperture on them every time it takes the picture, it gets pretty uneven. So I'll see some major um, flicker in it, and you'll see it here by these big zigzags, but this one's not too bad. But even with those big zigzags and the flicker, I can fix it with this program. So step one, we're going to go in and just make some keyframes. Click that button, and I just pick however many I want in between 20. And then... If I want and I don't like where it's at, like see how there's a kind of a jump here? Well, I can scroll right over to that, I'll go like this, which then I can see here would be my spot. I just mark it, a little blue spot, and I put a keyframe there. For this one, I don't really need that many. I'll just stick with three, and I can see that there's three because it's automatically done at one, one, two, and three. And we'll just go to the next thing, save, and it goes pretty quick. And then from there, we're going to drag it into Lightroom. I'll click this button, and it gives you an error. It's like, drag this button. Don't, don't click it. So I'm going to grab it, 
and drag Chloe over here to Lightroom. I'm still holding on to it, and I'm under Library, and I let go there, and it automatically opens up the import feature of Lightroom. Now, with my Canon files, my CR2, so I can just add them in. If I have my Sony, it shoots a, like an ARAW, ARW, and I have to convert it to DNG. It's a longer process, so I actually do those and convert them to DNGs before I even start LR time lapse. It just makes it easier. But for my Canon files, I don't have to do that. So we're just going to come right over here to import. And it's starting to import all my files for me. Hopefully you know how to use Lightroom. Uh, pretty easy. If you've used Adobe RAW, it works pretty much the same. It's just different layout. And there's a few other things you can do with Lightroom that you can't do with Camera RAW. So as it's loading up, I can see that it's going through, but the first step I'm going to want to do is I don't need to see all these. I don't need to edit all these. I just want to edit the keyframes. So we're going to come over here to Filters and change that to 01LRT, which is LR Time Lapse Pro 4 keyframes. So it's changing that where LR Time Lapse has marked those three keyframes, and they'll show up right here as soon as it's done loading. And there we are, there's my three keyframes. So next is just going into the develop tab. So in the develop tab, this is where you make all your changes to your file. So all your color correction, um, all your sharpening, your changes, your cropping that you wanna do, there's, there's so many different things you can do in here. And that's something that if you're familiar with Lightroom, you'll know what to do here. The main thing is showing the steps for what you do with LR time lapse. So if I come through here and adjust my exposure, match up my histogram, maybe we want to get rid of some of the highlights, maybe it looks a little too red, and we'll kill it, drop down the temperature a little bit, and just, we'll just make a bunch of adjustments here. And add a little dehaze, because I think that gives a little more contrast to it too. And, you know, do whatever you want. That's the main thing, it's your photo and your videos, so make it look how you think looks best. And we'll just stick with that for now. Actually, let's add a little crop in there too, just for the heck of it. Just rotate it just a little bit. Now, the next thing I want to do is sync the settings of what I've done to this first one to all three. So I'm going to come in here and just select all of them, holding down Shift key and then picking the last one there. And we're going to come up here to the scripts. The main thing is using the scripts to sync it versus using the Lightroom sync. So come over here to the LR time lapse. Uh, sync keyframes click that guy it's automatically changed these two also now maybe I don't like how this one looks I don't think that one's too bad because there's a little bit of shadows going through with the clouds this middle one's a little darker even though it is the clouds but if I come through here and beef up those shadows just a little bit and maybe even just the highlights because you saw on my LR time lapse sequence is a little bit darker here. So this is where I can take that center frame and then rise it up just a little bit. Now the thing is if you go too crazy then things can start looking odd. So you just want to make sure it kind of looks natural. It's a natural um, adjustment with it because it definitely can cause problems. So now that I've done that and I'm not going to change the back one, I'll change it just a little bit. Just a little brighter. I don't have to resync it unless I feel that everything needs to be in sync with each other. So what we'll do next is go over to library, make sure all three of these guys are selected again, and we're going to save the metadata to their files. So I just come over here and hit save metadata to files. So with the raw files, that's just saving a little sidecar XMP file and doesn't edit my original. It just adds a little code so that the programs that read those raw files and read those XMPs know what to do with it. So back into our steps here, we've come into reload. So we're going to reload what we just did in Lightroom. And all you do is see the three frames have adjusted. So it looks like they've gotten quite a bit brighter here. And you see a little angle of my crop too. So next we're going to just do auto transition. So this is the slow steps of, you know, adjusting each file to match up with what I just did. And then save that. 
And then the next one here is the visual preview. The visual preview will take a little bit of time. As you see, it's kind of going through and changing every one of these files to kind of match with what I've just done with these keyframes. So as we're waiting, it could take, you know, it's at 5%. It might take about three to five minutes before it's finished. And you can't really scrub too far in, just makes it a little slow, but you can kind of see from what I edited to the original. So we'll go ahead and let this do its thing. Okay, once the visual previews have loaded, then we're going to go over to Visual D Flicker. What this does is help even out the exposure a bit and just kind of eliminate some of the flickering, a little bit more of a fine tuning device. So as you go through there, it does it pretty quick and then you just come through and hit save. And the saving will take almost as long as the visual previews did it to load, but not quite as bad. So let's let that load up here. All right, now we're loaded and gone through all of our steps, and we're done with LR time lapse for the editing portion. Now comes the rendering. But again, let's just do a quick overview again. You make your keyframes, just kind of save how many keyframes you want to do, drag it into Lightroom, edit your keyframes from there. Then, once you've edited them, um, go into your scripts and sync your keyframes if they need to be synced for the, the type of stuff that you've done. I usually will at least sync them one time, but then individual adjustments are fine. From there, then you go into your library again, metadata. We're going to save the metadata to the files and then come back in. We're going to reload them. Just click your auto transition. We're going to save it. Do the visual previews. So from that, you can see kind of the edited version versus the non-edited version. We're going to use a visual D flicker and then we're going to save it again. So here's kind of our final preview we can see to see if we like what we've done. And then the next step is going to go on to the rendering. A couple of different routes you can render. Um, one of them, of course, through LR time lapse, we'll use Lightroom. And then another one, it'll tell you that you can use like Adobe After Effects, which is another video of mine just showing you how to render through After Effects after you've used LR time lapse. So check that one out. So next, we're going to hit render video and from there it just tells you that the adjustments still have to be developed and gives you a little bit about what you need to do if you're using Lightroom or After Effects so what we're gonna do in Lightroom because we're just gonna use it with these two programs that we have is come back to Lightroom now you wanna change it from just viewing your keyframes you need to view the full sequence and then once you see everything there you need to select everything so I can come into edit and select all or just Command or Control A, and then right click on one of them that's selected, and we want to reload all of the metadata files that have been saved to it. So, metadata right here, we're going to read the metadata from the files. It's going to take a little bit of time just reading all those XMP files that it's written through LR time lapse. Once it's done that, then we're going to go to export. So, if you've exported a photo out of Lightroom, it's kind of the same way, except we just pick some different options from there. And now that it's done, let's go to File. And of course, I've got all of these selected still. And Export. So where do I want to export it to? Well, I'm not going to export it to my hard drive. I want to export to a time lapse for LR time lapse. And then this tells a little bit about what you're doing and wants to make sure you're doing it right. So just kind of get familiar, check out all the options and see what there is to see if you want to change anything. So I'm going to kind of keep it at the very basics of what it has in here. I'm not really going to change much at all just to show you how easy it can be. Uh, I'm just telling you what program it's using and where it's going to go to. So I'm going to change it to, uh, well, we'll just leave it to this. It's going to go to videos and a time lapse test. And let's do, I'm just going to do today's date, March 31st, 2017. And then if I need to change anything, like if I've, you know, want to change some colors and stuff like that. And let's just hit export. Now again, it's got to export all of these files. So it's going to take a little bit of time to do that, which is the same for After Effects also. Being that it's reading 490 raw files, it can take some time. Now that Adobe Lightroom has finished exporting out the files into LR time-lapse, we're down to the final stage, and this is for the rendering. 
Now, there's a few different choices for codecs and output sizes and your speed and your quality. And depending on your computer, for example, I'm using a Windows computer here, so I can't choose a ProRes. And I don't have any H.265 plugins installed on this either, so I can't do either of those. I can at least change what resolution I want based off the file size from the camera that I shot. So I'd go up to a 4K, no problem. And then my speed, what frame rate I want to set it at, I can adjust that as much as I want. Maybe I want to go up to 60 frames. Uh, maybe I want to go down to 23,976. So depending on what you want to do, you've got a handful of choices for even the quality and whatnot. So we're just going to go in here to render the video. And this guy, you can see down here, it shows that it's rendering the video and what frame it's going at. So it's going a little bit faster pace here than what Lightroom did. And we're almost there to get our final product of what we've been working for. And pretty simple process. A lot of it's just trial and error, messing around, um, just giving yourself some options and trying different settings to see what you can come up with. It's pretty awesome what you can do. And now our render is done. And here's the final outcome from using this program. Now if this helped you out, check out some of my other videos. One showing you how to shoot a time lapse and the settings I use. One for using a slider. And one for using Adobe After Effects for rendering out. Thanks for watching and subscribe to my channel if you'd like to see some of the other videos and time lapses that I do.